Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. In every developed nation, hunger is always a problem that happens somewhere else, not in your city. But what happens if you are the one who have fallen through the cracks and can't afford your next meal? Australia is a country considered by many to be a land of plenty. With a yearly GDP of almost 800 million US dollars and a standard of living envied by the world at large, few will suspect poverty exists in this paradise. But beneath this surface of prosperity exists a social fault line that is slowly increasing its presence across the country's sunny outlook. There is a growing percentage of Australians who cannot afford to buy food and they're not necessarily the homeless or unemployed. We see old people isolated and alone with no one else to care for. Uh, we see engineers, we see dentists, we see all sorts of professionals and unprofessional people. The bottom line today is that there are so many millions of Australians that are only two paydays away from being in that same position. Pastor John and his street feeding effort known as Mama Reens is but one of more than 500 welfare agencies in Brisbane alone that focuses on providing food for those in need. But to feed so many can be a daunting challenge in terms of resources for many of these non-profit organisations. Fortunately for John and others like him, there is already a nationwide effort to give the support these organisations badly need. Food Bank is a national non-profit organisation that is attempting to solve the problem of hunger in Australia by distributing food to welfare agencies that feed the needy. Food Bank does that by locating surplus food from food producers that is otherwise headed for the dump and redistributing it to people in need. For Ken McMillan, who is the general manager here at Food Bank Queensland, working for such a cause is a noble, though very unenviable job. Well, I'm a beggar. I just go and I talk to food companies. So food bank's role is to collect as much of that surplus, pick that up, clean it up and make it presentable for the welfare agencies who, who in turn then feed people in need. But Food Bank is no rag and bone organisation. Here in Queensland alone, the Food Bank operation is a highly professional logistical team that collects and distributes food to over 300 welfare agencies that feed up to 17,000 people a week. But even this is not enough. We should be feeding probably up to 200, 300,000 people. So we're not even meeting the mark, not even close. With the recent economic crisis, however, Ken McMillan's problems with supply has also taken a turn for the worse. For Ken McMillan, the need to find enough food to feed as many people as Food Bank can is a prevailing problem that he constantly grapples with. Ken, however, is not a person who will sit idle waiting for donations to fall in his lap. Today, he will be making a trip down to one of Australia's biggest supermarket chains, Woolworths, to follow up on a new initiative between Food Bank and the company that could mean a much needed injection of food supply on a long term basis. They'll go well in the crushed. school um, breakfast program. We're always looking for cereal for the kids. Yep. We've got some coffee here for the street people. That'll be list great for them. Yep. Really appreciate that. 
Within the storeroom areas there is a nominated person each day who is responsible to identify and determine whether the stock A is saleable, B is um, not fit for human consumption and what remains is then available um, to be um, donated as such to Food Bank. Corporate partners such as Woolworths are a primary source of food bank supplies across Australia. But with the rising demand for food, Ken understands that this alone is not enough. He will have to continue to find new sources of food supplies on a constant basis. But that can be a challenge as there are a lot of misconceptions and mindsets he will have to change when it comes to educating people to the fact that hunger exists in Australia. But recognising that there is a hunger problem in a first world country can be a very hard pill to swallow, especially when it is not as visible amidst the country's affluence. The hardest thing is for them to understand that there is a need. People do not want to accept that we have a problem with poverty in this country. People don't want to accept that we have our children and our mums and dads who are struggling. Hunger is no longer an overseas problem. You know, hunger lives with us here in Australia uh, and we need to accept that as a nation. That we, and we need to look after our poor. No one understands this better than one who has been caring for the underprivileged at the ground level, such as Pastor John Dowell, who runs Mama Reams, a street feeding program dedicated to helping the homeless and the poor. We have a, a great country, but there's a lot of cracks appearing and people are falling through them. The demographic of who is, who is homeless has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Um, people are falling through the cracks in an alarming rate. For other welfare organisations such as Rock Christian Church, who run their own food subsidy program, there is another facet to the local hunger problem that is markedly different from the kind one would expect from third world countries as compared to Australia. If we're really honest too, some of the countries overseas, their hard times, our hard times, is nothing compared to their hard times. But you see, everyone has different breaking strains. So someone overseas could, could extend maybe a week without food. Over here, you, you miss one day and they think that's it, the world's crashing and on them. People's perception of poverty is, is you know, the photo of the wino in, in overseas lying in the gutter with a bottle of plonk in his hand, unshaven. Well, that's not the case. You know, I'm talking about families that are struggling, but they deserve a feed. And all we're trying to do is give them food that's going to a done. Regardless of how one chooses to define hunger, however, Ken knows that the main priority for Food Bank is not to engage in debate, but to source for food for those in need. And this is a duty he will have to carry out as General Manager of Food Bank Queensland, even if he has to dirty his boots going to ground levels to canvas for his supply. Despite the affluence that pervades modern Australia, Australian citizens may find themselves just one paycheck away from poverty and unable to afford the next meal. But fortunately for some, a national organisation known as the Food Bank works tirelessly to provide food relief for those in need by redirecting surplus food from producers and markets that would otherwise be going to the dump. For General Manager Ken McMillan, getting the extra food to feed even a percentage of this group of needy Australians can be a challenge, even as 20% of all food produced in the country is wasted. This is because most food producers would rather dump their surplus stocks than flood the market, a move that would bring down the prices of their commodities. But this is a challenge that Ken McMillan gladly takes on. And today, he will be heading down to the farmlands to source for surplus produce before the farmers decide that they're better off putting the stocks in a landfill. Usually, Ken McMillan would not be as eager to head down to the farms to canvas food from the farmers, however. Hello, Ken. Welcome. Very pleased to meet you. I'm doing good. The toughest ones to convince are the farmers. 
Again, we're at the bottom end of the food chain. Uh, we're talking about the leftovers, the waste. So we're talking about 96% of all the production and stuff's gone through and we've got this 4% that's left over. And the easiest way for farmers in particular is just to dump the stuff. Well, that is a really, really good source of food. So we have to be in their face all the time. And that's the toughest thing. I don't know how many times I've heard people say to me, gee, you should have been here yesterday, mate, we threw it away. That's frustrating. Fortunately, today will not be one of those days, as West Farms is a long-time partner of Food Bank. This is the first time, however, that Ken is getting to meet Narell from West Farms, and it would be a good opportunity to further strengthen their working relationship. A second-generation family business, West Farms was one of the few farms that had made the initiative to contribute to Food Bank after finding out about what they do. This started uh, last year in 2008. We, my husband was at a meeting with Ken's wife actually on the same committee and they began talking and uh, Ken discovered the concept of food bank and she put him in touch with, uh, with Ken and very quickly we came on board. We loved the idea, loved the concept. Yes, that's, that's great. We're so happy that, you, um, that, that we know where our product is going and is actually really going to people who, who need it. Because sometimes you think, I hope it is going to people who, who really do need it and not just people who uh, are wanting to you know, get something for nothing and they really can afford it. But, uh, but indeed, food bank goes, they go to the hungry. But besides targeting primary food producers such as farmers, Food Bank also works tirelessly to procure food from another point of the food chain, notorious for its widespread dumping of surplus produce, the wholesale markets. For many wholesalers, it is common to overstock on the produce they put up for sale. But most of the time, whatever that is left unsold or deemed unfit for sale for whatever cosmetic reasons are usually put into a landfill, as it costs the merchants more to transport the food anywhere else. To tap on this huge resource, Ken McMillan has to make sure someone is always there on the ground to redirect this surplus from the dump right into a food bank transport truck. John Potter was a wholesaler in this very same market before retiring and joining Food Bank as a volunteer. To Ken, John's network of contacts in this market is crucial when it comes to sourcing for surplus food. But even with John's extensive experience and contacts in the markets, the first infant steps were not easy. In my early days, a lot of people did not want to support us, but they, I had to explain to them all the time what it's all about. The reason they didn't understand it, they didn't want to give the produce away. But then they realised they get a tax deduction for it, which is a government tax deduction of their tax, and we pick it up and it saves them in the long term putting it into landfill, which costs them money. Thanks to John Potter's efforts, many wholesalers are already part of Food Bank's extensive efforts to ensure that their surplus goods are redirected to those who need them rather than the dump. The markets here is, is purely supply and demand. So there's times when everyone has a plus, where everyone has an excess amount of product they're producing. And when we're in a situation like that, we're better off to give the product away than to flood the market with an oversupply which creates the market price to come down. I think it's a wonderful thing to get a lot of product which is perhaps not as, you know, as saleable as some others and be given to, you know, placing it in, a, in an area where it can be used by people who cannot afford it. And we have quite a few people all over the world uh, being in need of this food rather than just sitting here and not selling. The day may have started early for both Ken McMillan and John Potter, but it has been fruitful. One of the wholesalers has agreed to donate a few pellets of food he couldn't sell and Ken wastes no time in sending a truck down to their warehouse. To Ken and many others like himself, they may not be able to solve all the social problems that exist in Australia, but they believe that by feeding those in need, they may provide them with some ammunition with which to tackle their issues. From a personal perspective, well, I, I'm upset. It worries me. It worries me that one million children go without food. People going to, you know, without food cause a lot of social problems. 
and that's why we have things like children absenteeism at school, um, vandalism, uh, because these kids are hungry. They are hungry and um, we need to look after them. And we can put some food into these children's stomach and to the adults. It makes them a lot better people and they get on with their lives a lot better. For some others, however, their goals are more straightforward. They simply want to feed the hungry. Pastor John Dow runs a twice weekly street feeding program known as Mama Reams. With this fresh influx of food stock, Pastor John and his team waste no time in getting what they need in preparation for what may be Brisbane's largest and most organised street feeding effort. Food Bank is a national organisation operating across five different states in Australia and is the country's largest hunger relief effort. One of the agencies operating with help from Food Bank is Mama Reams, an agency run by Pastor John Dowell that focuses on feeding the homeless and disadvantaged of Brisbane through a twice-weekly street van feeding session. Pastor John has been running the Mama Reams program from his own home porch for more than eight years now. He relies on his team of volunteers as well as donations from Food Bank and other organisations to carry on his work. Pastor John's main philosophy is to treat his recipients with dignity while providing them with quality meals. Beyond this, John also hopes to foster a community of support within this underprivileged group themselves during the weekly feeding sessions. One of the aspects you'll soon lose if you find yourself homeless in our city is, is, is your sense of community. The meetings that we have have become social meetings. It's a place for people to gather together that are sharing the same experiences. You know, we've, uh, in this one location, I've been there five years, and many of those people I've seen from the start. I've watched them grow. I've, I've watched them overcome addictions. Many people go away and they'll come back. They'll come back and visit us and they'll come back with stories about how they got that job and how they now have a place to live. And I love to see them come back because that's what we live for, to see that. But attempting to reintegrate the homeless or underprivileged back into society can prove more challenging than simply providing them meals. There is widespread criticism that efforts such as Mama Reen's actually do more harm than good as they open up an avenue of abuse for some who see these handouts as an easy excuse to continue their vagrant lifestyles. Karen is a volunteer worker at a charity food store in a small church at Deception Bay, 45 minutes east of Brisbane City. But it wasn't too long ago that she and her husband were suffering from serious drug addictions. She recalls how they had abused the street handouts. Can I tell you, I didn't care. I didn't care because I needed that next drug fix and if I had to spend that money on food, then there was the next drug fix, which means I had to steal something, hawk something, or beg somebody for money and deceive them. So as much as it hurt my pride to go in and ask for food, it became something that was probably easier to do because it supplied the need of sustenance for food so that I could spend it on those drugs. Karen today has managed to get her life back on track and while she may have abused food aid herself previously, she believes it is still an important step to help people. Her pastor, David, explains that there also has to be complementing efforts to combat the social problems that are masked beneath the facade of hunger. If you put something in someone's stomach when they're hungry, they will usually sit down and listen to you. So it's like going fishing, it's, it's a bait. Um, uh, you know, it's depending on where you want that person to go. So food is just one of the ways. So it's not the only way because uh, we have people that come here uh, just because they want to have someone to talk to. I have a lady, I have people here that their whole job is just to talk. So uh, it's not all just food, it's part of um, the whole. So. Using food as a weapon by which to address social issues is something Pastor John especially believes in, 
and his own efforts reflect his beliefs that being well-fed is the first step for any underprivileged individual to regain their self-respect, as well as their link to the community and society. And tonight will be another night where Pastor John walks the talk on his convictions. Mama Reen's recipients come from a variety of different backgrounds that include retirees and students to drug addicts and felons on the run. But Pastor John and his team make no distinctions from one to the other and serve them all equally. I was welcomed. Um, I, I cried, you know. There was a lot of things that upset me and stuff like that. Um, I let it... I've met a lot of people, you know, it was a gathering place to meet up, to have a feed together and a yarn, you know, and that's what community base is about. It's a great help. I live up the street, I'm a student, so I, get, I don't get a lot of money and it's pretty hard to get by. So this is just great to have a bit of extra food to be able to look after myself. It's an incredible sense of satisfaction, Kenny. Um, just before I shook hands with a little two-year-old, and he said, thank you, Pastor Job, and uh, brings tears to your eyes, you know. To come out here and to give some food to somebody who's hungry or in need, you can't put a price on that. You couldn't buy that feeling, not for all the money in the world. You couldn't buy it. It has been a rewarding evening for both John and his associates. They gather to give customary thanks and blessings, but they know that today will be a long way from being the last session they will have to operate for the underprivileged. But it is not always about giving without receiving back. Sometimes one gets heartwarming reminders that what they're doing actually does change people's lives. It's good about the eggs because we, I remember serving a man who was really needed emergency parcel. He was bad off and um, had nothing. And I said, we've got a food bank. You could come anytime you like and we can help you out with food parcel. And then he ended up coming the following Thursday. And um, yeah, and from then on, he's been giving us eggs, which is great. It's good to see when people don't just take, but they give a little bit back.